Yo, yo, YouTube! The name's Chris and I have problems with Super Meat Boy. This is actually the first episode of this series and I'm going to explain the basics of this game to you in this one and kind of speed through the first world. Anyway, uh, as you can see there is like no option in this game to set the language to um, English, which is kind of sad, but like the game doesn't have that much text anyway. So let's get right started. Uh, in the beginning you are going to see that we can only choose the forest and like a basic, like the internet world basically where you can download free levels and after I finish this game I am going to do this, do some internet levels because I think those are the interesting ones. Like. Everybody has seen has seen regular worlds, so whatever. Let's get right started. Every world begins with a cutscene, and as you might have seen, I already did a bit of this because I had a failed recording where my parents <laughs> interrupted me. Anyway, uh, the basic story in this game is like it's pretty simple. Like you are Meat Boy, and you have a girlfriend whose name is Bandage Girl, and there is this evil guy named Doctor Fetus, and he is jealous of you, and he steals your girlfriend, and you are now a daring hero on his quest to save his beloved girlfriend, right? So, as you can see, I finished four levels already, and I like I would have liked to start from scratch, but as I said, failed recording. Um, there are 20 levels per world, and as you can see, I can freely choose between all of those, so I could start with with 20. But I'm going to do them in order. Um, there is also this big, this big uh, field right next to me, which says four out of seventeen. Usually that would say zero out of seventeen, obviously. But uh, like it indicates how many levels you've beaten. And if you beat seventeen levels within this world, you get access to this big one, which is the boss. So let's get right started. Um, the gameplay is pretty simple. You can walk. You can walk, you can run as Meat Boy, you can jump, and you have wall jump, and that's basically it. In every level there is Bandage Girl, which is basically your goal to get there. And as you can see, I get there, and yeah, it says A+. Plus. Normally it wouldn't say that, but you, you see in the top right corner, during this replay, you see my time running, and you see there is also this flag with a 3.0 next to it. That is the time you need to, to, to achieve for the A+, so I am going to to, um, to repeat this level just to get the, the A+, on camera. So I'm just going to jump at this wall, jump to Bandage Girl, and do it in basically like one, one and a half seconds to do it properly. So uh, that gives you the A+, and the A+, does something Something I will get into a little bit later in this episode, and we are going to move on to the next level. What I like about this game is the, the quick respawning, basically. I'm going to speed through this because I pretty much explained everything. Uh, the quick respawning, like if you die, let me show this, you immediately respawn. And this is really one of the beauties about this game, because you are going to die a lot, and you don't always have to wait an eternity uh, until you until you can play your stage again. Another feature of this game, which people seem to really like, I'm going to show this here, is if you rescue Bandage Girl, you get this this replay, and it shows all your deaths, basically, like so. So that's pretty cool in my opinion. It is pretty cool, but it gets boring to watch if you play the game like after some time. Anyway, next level. Um, there is one more thing I'd like to show, but I think I can't show it anymore because I've gotten it already. Like uh, normally there would be a bandage down here, where there are 20 of in each world. I'm going to show this. Like there are 19 more bandages to get, so I'm not really worried. So that was an A+, and I do want to show the, the A+, times on camera, so I'm going to redo this. It's not really like it's hard, but I do want to show it for completion's sake. And another feature of this game, another gimmick, is warp zones, which I'm getting into now. There are three warp zones hidden in every world, which look like this, and if you get into them, this happens. Uh, warp zones consist of three stages which you have to do in succession. You have three lives per stage, and if you fail on one of those stages, you have to redo the entire warp zone. Uh, normally there would be a bandage here, which is why I got here, just to, to show you how it's done. I have gotten that already, so 
I can't show you this unfortunately. Anyway, uh, this is the first warp zone and as such it is relatively easy obviously. Uh, one challenge I... oops, that was bad. One challenge I, I have here is actually that I'm playing with the gamepad for the first time. Like when I re when I played Super Meat Boy for the first time, that would be bandaged up here by the way. When I played Super Meat Boy for the first time, I played it with, with a keyboard and I might switch to that if the controller poses a big problem. Uh, but so far I am enjoying it, even though I, I could handle the keyboard controls a lot better. That was bad. Um, as the levels get harder, they will also introduce new hazards to you, such as these, as these razor blades, which obviously kill you. Everything in this game kills you in one hit, so there's not really like a an energy bar or anything. If you get hit, it's over. Uh, so uh, this said, um, I'm sorry, Meat Boy, but Bandage Girl is another warp zone, obviously being a reference to Super Mario Land. Anyway, I am going to, to continue here climb up the holy mountain. You see the level names are English, even though my, my game language is German, so really there is not that much need of, of me setting the language to English somehow, even though I would love to have done it. But. So from now this is this is new territory, we, we get the A pluses shown again if we got them, and we don't get them shown if we don't got them. There's a bandage up here, it's kinda kinda jerkish placement. For for beginners or guys, this is a really hard bandage already. I am obviously used to it already, so I don't really mind. Anyway, this wasn't an A plus. Like if you go for bandages, you most likely won't get an A plus, so bandage levels you that wasn't A plus time. What the hell? Let me try that again. I probably have to go up here to save time. Um so you most likely will have to play every level that has a bandage um, twice. Most of them you will. Anyway, I remember this level has a really trollish bandage. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, this is a really trollish one and it might actually take me some time. I am... shit. I am shit, yeah. Um, I am going to play this as Meat Boy only. So, like, during the course of the game you are going to unlock a lot more characters, but I'm only going to play as Meat Boy as a as an added challenge, so to speak. Oh, that sucked. I think I still... I can't get that anymore. Um, as an added challenge I will only play Meat Boy because some characters, so, like, some really... really... some really break the game others break certain levels. Like there's this one character, Flywrench, who basically breaks the entire game, which is kind of lame. If you ask me, how do I get this? Like, this is one of those bandages I've always had problems with, even in my original, like, of course, especially in my original playthrough. But as you can clearly, clearly see, I have problems with this bandage to this date. And it kind of bugs me. Because it, like this is the first wall, this shouldn't be hard. Thank you. Thank you. This was even an A plus. I'm happy. We uh, are introducing these breakable blocks here. As soon as you touch them, they fall apart. So they they allow for one single um, wall jump, and then they break. So this was the A plus. I'm going to play this again because, as you might have seen, there was a bandage here. Obviously have to get that. Yeah, thank you. That was a lot more pleasant than the last time. Um, there is a warp zone here, as you can see. One gimmick with the warp zones is that they are going to disappear after a certain amount of time, so I have to be quick about those two. This is a red warp zone, as you can see, as I get sucked in there. Um, there is one red warp zone per, per um, world, and a red warp zone always contains a new unlockable character. You have to play those warp zones with that character and like there's nothing I can do about this. I'm forced to play about the guy that is going to appear soon, like with this guy. So I, I obviously will play those warp zones with those characters just for completion's sake to unlock those guys. And it always uh, starts with, with a cinematic, actually. 
Gordon. I'll just let you watch through this. Most characters, like I think, all of them are references to to some games, to to any games. Like this is Commander Video from Bitrip Command. I haven't played the game myself. It just says here, Bitrip Runner. I'm sorry, Bitrip Command. Whatever. So this man's gimmick is that he can float in the air for quite a while, like this. See? And you can fly, obviously, with that. So, uh, it's pretty cool. And you actually, I think you need this guy to access one warp zone. So, of course, things I can't do with Meat Boy, I'm going to do with, with the other characters. Anyway. So, like, really, there's not much to worry here. Oops. Yeah, this is basically 8-bit lava down there, or something along those lines. It's probably not lava, because, like, lava doesn't flash like that. Anyway, we have unlocked Commander Video. Yeah, that is one instance where I would like to have English text, but, like, sorry, I can't really do anything. Uh, unlocking the first character unlocks the character select screen so you can see uh, every 10 bandages we get another we get another um, character here anyway uh, let's go for the A plus here so I hope to finish this first world like the the first 20 levels within this episode and I don't really see that many problems with it Ooh, that was bad yeah, excuse my bad play right here. I used to be better at this game, but I haven't played it for quite a while. So I need to get used to it again. But I think that's actually a good thing that I'm not so used to the game anymore. Because this is a really hard game and it's meant to cause you trouble. And I think uh, like it would it adds a lot to the feel of the game when when it causes you trouble. I mean it is impressive to see a Super Meat Boy run where the guy basically dies never. Like, I've seen speedruns of this game where, where which were pretty insane, like, the runner always ne almost never died, and that's pretty impressive, but I think the real feel of the game is dying a lot, and that's what I'm going to do here. So, there's a bandage down here. How did I think I could make that? Oops! Oh, and I can do this. That was bad. Okay, Razor go through. Wall jump here. Oh god. Was that an A plus? Probably not. Oh. I got the bandage. Let's get the A plus. Whee! Yeah. Nah, nothing really to worry about. This is 119, so we have two levels to go, and I think there is a warp zone in here. Man, the, that's obviously also one of the the downsides of not playing this blind is the fact that I know where all the warp zones are. But as I said, excuse me, I can't really do anything about it, and I love this game too much to not play it. Team Meat Presents. Presents? Presents? Super Meat Boy. No presents. Anyway. Same principle. Three lives per level. In the character warp zones, I don't think I said that. But in the character warp zones, you don't have lives, so you you can try until you die, and that's pretty good because there is a w one one warp zone uh, that you need all the lives you can get. Like having three lives per level on this one would be pretty insane. Now, I like the concept of this level, like basically getting through this giant maze-like thing before the razors have have collapsed your floor. So you have to be you have to be quick about this. This is a nice touch to add a timer to the warp zone levels, even though they officially don't have one. So it's kind of nice. Anyway, one three. There has to be a bandage here because, as I said, there's always two bandages per warp zone. And there wasn't, there definitely wasn't one on the first level, I looked really closely there. Uh, bandage. Bandage girl. Thanks, meat boy. And I unlocked the headcrab. The headcrab gimmick is that the crab can stick to walls. But, like, I 
don't think there is any level in the game where the, this really helps you. But then again, this is the character you get for, for 10 bandages. This is basically the first character you are meant to unlock. So it really is appropriate that he doesn't help you in any way. Anyway, oh, there's a... Hello. Hello, Razor. There's a bandage up here. And uh, we are almost done here. This gotta go through here. Uh oh. Ooh. Go here, advantage girl, grade A plus. And if we press A, we get back to the title select. So we could go to the boss who's called the little slugger, but as you can see if I press X it says Dunkelwelt, which which means dark world. And if I press X, I get to the dark world. Each world has a dark world, a dark version basically, which is um, like the 20, the same 20 levels, just a lot harder. And I am actually going to do the dark world in the next episode. As of now, I thank you guys for watching and I really hope you will tune in for the next few episodes because it really is going to pick up like in a few episodes only. You could see I could do this within one episode and I will have a lot more trouble with the upcoming worlds. So thank you guys for watching. Please comment, share and like if, if you liked my content and see you guys in the next one.